Erasure Coding Technology Greetings everyone! In this video, we're proceeding with the discussion about the methods of storage configuration. To narrow the focus and keep things in line with our previous videos, we'll be talking about the way of building the storage subsystem of an HCI solution called Erasure Coding Technology. For starters, a quick plan for what will be discussed today. First, we'll determine what the Erasure Coding Technology is and how it works. After that, we'll pivot to making a quick comparison with another storage technology that is commonly known as RAID. We will then look at where Erasure Coding could be used best, after which we'll identify and discuss the main advantages and disadvantages of Erasure Coding. RAID, or Redundant Array of Independent Drives, is a technology used to increase data storage performance and reliability. Today's topic is closely related to the topic that we discussed in the previous video. So let's first make a quick recap of the last discussion and then dive into today's topic. In the previous video, we discussed RAID technology. So RAID, or Redundant Array of Independent Drives, is a technology used to increase data storage performance and reliability. RAID takes multiple disks and combines them into a single logical drive. If one or more drives comes to fail, the user can recover that data by replacing the faulty drive and rebuilding the array. Such an approach provides robust data protection and performance. Erasure Coding, or EC, is one of the data protection methods through which the data is broken down into fragments. Okay, now that we've recapped the previous video, we can dive into today's topic. Erasure coding is quite a complicated technology for quick understanding. Erasure coding has different implementation variations, which means that each individual variation can possess a somewhat different name. In this video, we'll discuss the general idea behind the technology of erasure coding and the principles of its work. Also, a quick disclaimer. This video strongly correlates with the previous one, so we recommend watching the last video to understand this one better. First of all, let me start with the reason for talking about and using erasure coding. The IT administrators who design storage systems must plan ahead their IT infrastructure configuration so that mission-critical data is not lost in case any failure occurs. With this in mind, using erasure coding prevents the loss of data due to storage node failure. To make it simple, Erasure Coding, or EC, is a data protection and storage process through which a data object is broken down into smaller components or fragments, and then each of those gets encoded with redundant data padding. EC transforms data object fragments into larger fragments and uses the primary data object identifier to recover each fragment. Also, Erasure Coding is a parity-based storage technique so it's very similar to RAID 5 and RAID 6. Because of that similarity, we can call erasure coding a RAID 5 or 6 over the network, or RAIN. The difference of erasure coding is that the data fragments are spreading across the storage nodes, and in RAID 5 and 6, data fragments are spreading across drives in the RAID array. Now that we got that out of the way, Let's dive a bit deeper into how erasure coding works. As we determined, erasure coding takes the original data and divides it into fragments. Having done that, EC adds additional redundant blocks for data protection. And after that, it spreads all the blocks across storage nodes, as shown on the diagram. Looking at the diagram, you can see that we have five storage nodes in the cluster and the original data that'll be written to the cluster storage. Erasure coding will divide that original data into smaller fragments and then add the redundant fragments. After that, erasure coding will spread the original data blocks and the redundant data blocks across your storage nodes. If something goes wrong, the system will be able to tolerate the failure of the number of storage nodes depending on the number of redundant fragments of data. In the displayed case, 
The cluster has two redundant fragments so that the cluster can survive the failure of two storage nodes without losing access to the cluster storage. Right now, on your screen, you see the easiest way of showing the erasure coding mathematic equation. As you can see, we have a combination of original data fragments and redundant data fragments for protection. The redundant fragments will be used for restoring the data in case of the failure of one or more storage nodes, depending on the way erasure coding is configured. Erasure coding and RAID are sometimes mixed up, but in essence, they're very much different from each other. RAID allows data to be stored on multiple drives combined into one logical volume and stay protected in case of drive failures. EC, on the other hand, divides data into fragments, then combines them with redundant fragments and spreads them across multiple storage nodes. So, as you can see, RAID technology provides local server storage resiliency and erasure coding provides cluster-wide storage resiliency. Most frequently, erasure coding is used in large enterprise environments that require data protection against storage node failure. Here are some cases where EC can be very beneficial. Having covered that, we're now approaching the end of the topic. So it's time to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of erasure coding. Erasure coding provides advanced methods of data protection and disaster recovery. This technology is used to avoid data loss and bring always-on availability to organizations. Erasure coding has the following advantages. Utilization. There are different variations of erasure coding implementation. The storage capacity available to the cluster depends on how many redundant data fragments will be created and written to the storage nodes. For better understanding, here's a quick example. We have five nodes. The original data will be divided into fragments that will be stored on three storage nodes. Also, there will be two redundant fragments written to two storage nodes. From this configuration, we'll get 60% of the storage available for the cluster. This configuration can be changed into different ones where you'll have a lesser number of redundant fragments and more available storage, or less available storage and more redundancy. Since data is divided into fragments and there are redundant data fragments spread across storage nodes, the cluster can tolerate the failure of a certain number of nodes in the cluster based on the variation of erasure coding implementation. You can have different levels of reliability based on the number of redundant data fragments and choose the one best suited for you. Suitability. Erasure coding can be used for any file size, ranging from small storage sizes of kilobytes to large block sizes of petabytes. Flexibility. You can replace the failed components when convenient without taking the system offline. We've seen all the advantages, so now it's time for disadvantages. To build the cluster based on erasure coding, you need to have a particular number of storage nodes in the cluster. The number of nodes depends on the number of redundant fragments. The bare minimum for a cluster based on erasure coding is three nodes. But in practice, this number goes to four to have stability in the cluster. So, for small clusters, the cost of the solution will be very high. To correctly calculate the number of redundant fragments and spread them along with the original ones across storage nodes, the cluster requires CPU and memory resources. The more redundant fragments and storage nodes you have, the more CPU and memory resources will be needed. Because of the CPU utilization along with RAM utilization, the delays in storage operations will increase. In fact, operating in the same way as RAID 5 or 6, the resulting performance of the storage cluster will be lower. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Tune in next time to learn about containers.